is an Ivy League school today even worth it? As someone who attended Yale on full financial aid and now works full-time in the education industry, I think I have a pretty unique view to this question. For context, I'm Kevin Zen, the current co-founder of the Elevate Ed School, formerly known as ZenEd. I attended Yale from 2016 to 2020, where I lived in Ezra Stiles College, which, for those of you who don't know, is the Flintstone-looking one. <laughs> Honestly, I just did two main extracurriculars while I was there. I was part of the Yale Model United Nations Taiwan team for two years, and I was also president of the Yale Breakdance team. In fact, some of my fondest memories are living with my breakdance buddies during my junior and senior year. While I was there, I was also part of a secret society during my last year, my senior year, and I was heavily, heavily involved in entrepreneurship and business. So much so that I didn't really spend that much uh, time or effort on my Yale classes. In fact, I almost dropped out of Yale during my sophomore year to become one of those startup entrepreneur types. But in a series of unexpected events, I stuck it out and I graduated with a degree in East Asian Studies in 2020, right at the height of the pandemic. <sighs> that year was tough. I applied to 50 to 60 jobs in finance, consulting, entrepreneurship, and really I only got one offer. I think it was kind of a pity offer from my friend's startup in New York, but I was still really grateful for the opportunity and I was expecting to move there in the summer. But as things turned out, COVID was in full blast. And so I stayed in Miami. Uh, I was living in my childhood bedroom. So I did the only thing I knew how. I started another business. My first business was a food tech startup called Home Cooked that totally failed. My second business is this tutoring and college consulting agency shop. Elevated in so many ways is much easier and simpler than my first business because now I knew what not to do. I focused on customers, sales, and keeping costs low. Because there was a lot of co-founder drama during my first business, I did everything myself this time around and only invited my current co-founder Jeff once this business was making consistent revenue. But uh, starting this company was by no means a walk in the park. I worked 50 to 60 hours a week during the pandemic to support my family, my parents who had just lost their jobs as restaurant workers. I was on Zoom for so long and so often that I developed back and eye problems. I poured hundreds of hours of my blood, sweat and tears, energy, effort into this YouTube channel only to find very minimal returns. It felt like no one was watching and the worst part was that I was doing all this to help my parents, but they would just fight all the time. Without getting too much into it, let's just say I found myself embracing a new job, becoming my parents' therapist. Perhaps this is something other first-generation immigrants can relate to, wanting to, to help them and yet sometimes being kind of repelled by them too. And um, I just found this job to be very emotionally draining, not to mention the fact that sometimes when things got too heated, I would have to physically step in and separate them. The icing on the cake was that around this time, my mom got scammed and lost tens of thousands of dollars. It wasn't really her fault, and I don't blame her at all, because these scams were happening all over the US and abroad, happening to people we knew in our community. There was even a New York Times article written about it, and uh, she just was taken advantage of. This person added her on WeChat and literally spoke to her, called her, texted her every single day for more than a hundred days to gain her trust. Still, once she told us the bad news and that she'd lost all this money, I found myself questioning everything. Why was I even working so hard? It just felt like every time I was trying to take one step forward, we were actually just taking two steps back. Some people seem to think that just attending an Ivy League school, getting a degree, and graduating, this will just magically wipe away and solve all your problems. Of course, it can certainly make some aspects of professional life easier, open doors for you here and there, but there are just some realities of life that none of us can escape. Like most people during the pandemic, life was difficult, but two things kept me going. One was the fact that, you know, knowing that working in my parents' restaurant post-recession all those years ago was actually much harder than what I was going through then. For some reason, I found that comparison very motivating. Also, I felt really blessed that I could use my, my mind and my knowledge to support my family. Secondly, the work was deeply fulfilling. And a lot of that is thanks to you guys. The engagement from students, particularly on YouTube, was just sensational. Since 2016, 
We've helped students from all backgrounds get into Yale. And honestly, I'm more proud of the fact that I was able to help others achieve this dream than I am of getting into Yale myself. I really do feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And maybe this is why Yale decided to take a gamble on me and accept me last minute regular decision. So I could be a change agent for others. So we could be change agents for others. Okay, now I'd like to share some more detailed thoughts about whether Yale was worth it for me. Although you guys can probably guess the answer at this point. Then I'd like to offer some more logical advice on whether attending an Ivy League college could be right for you. Since ultimately this channel is about you guys, not us. By the way, if you could take a quick moment to just like this video so that our content can reach more folks, I'd really, really appreciate it. Another thing that you guys should know about me is that once upon a time, I was a QuestBridge finalist. Although I didn't get matched with Yale, I was still broke enough that I qualified for full financial aid. In fact, I was so broke that Yale actually paid me to go there. Reason being, if you move off campus during your third or fourth year, most Ivy League universities will just hand you a check, and whatever you don't spend on rent, you just get to keep. So as someone who went to Yale for free, it's pretty hard to argue that it wasn't worth it. Of course, like any institution, it has its flaws, but I consider myself so incredibly lucky, blessed, privileged to have been able to spend four years at a school where there were just so many driven folks. The key word here is driven. To this day, I still think that the kids at my high school, Phillips Exeter Academy, were more intelligent. They were just more raw like geniuses, I guess you could say. But Ivy League kids, man, those guys are always up to something. They're just always doing something. My favorite Yale joke is that if you put 10 Yaleys in a cave, they'll start like 14 clubs. <laughs> so hands down, the best part was by far the people, their energy, their ambition, their drive. Furthermore, like I mentioned before, my current line of work is related to media, education, college consulting, writing, tutoring. Needless to say, having a Yale degree as an educator is immensely beneficial. But then again, this was by design. I specifically chose this line of work after failing during my first business. I wanted to enter a field where I'd have a clear competitive advantage, which I think is just a good rule of thumb for any entrepreneur. Plus, I wanted to use my own personal experience to directly help and assist other students, particularly first-generation low-income students. Speaking of which, if you do identify as part of that group, do not hesitate to reach out, bother us, email me at kevin at elevated.school. I'll attach it in the description and comment section below. We're always looking to help more talented FGLI students. Moving on. <laughs> During my time at Yale, I did meet and befriend many students who are middle-class Americans. And we'd speak pretty openly and honestly about whether it was really worth it to go into hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt for a Yale degree. I genuinely believe this is a very tough call. We've got to consider what the advantages and disadvantages are. I'd say that the Ivy League alumni network is meh. I'd rate it a 2.5, maybe a 3 out of 5. From my experience, Yale alumni don't really look out for one another and the network honestly is not that powerful unless you're going into something like grad school, finance, or consulting, where there's a lot more Ivy League alumni concentrated. From my experience, Yale alumni don't really go out of their way to help each other unless you guys were in the same dorm or same club and you have a much more tight-knit connection. My sister graduated from the University of Virginia and their alumni are far better connected and far more generous than Yale alumni are. Next up, the academics. Yale classes were also, hmm, okay, maybe a three, 3.5 out of five. I think I learned more from YouTube from 2020 to 2023 than I did at Yale from 2016 to 2020. Although, admittedly, much of that is due to the fact that I wasn't really focusing on school, nor did I really take the best classes available. Many high schoolers and parents don't know this, but there are entire college curriculums available online for free. MIT's open courseware, Stanford's Graduate School of Business. They have so many lectures available on YouTube and you don't have to pay a single penny. So really when you go to a college in the 21st century, you're not really paying for knowledge anymore or for your education, I guess you could say, but more for the boarding experience as well as the community. I also can't help but feel a little frustrated or cheated that Yale taught me nothing about adulting and surviving in the real world, like how to pay taxes, how to manage my personal finances. These are topics that I feel like every single higher institution of learning should educate students on. 
On the flip side, one of the very best classes I took at Yale was related to psychology and relationships. In that class, I learned so much about attachment styles, why we're attracted to the people that we are. We read about famous and interesting psychological studies. And honestly, all of that information has really helped me become a much better partner for my fiance. Which, yeah, is another major update. I moved to Brazil in 2020, you guys, right in the pandemic. My family thought I was crazy, but I met up with my fiance, who I just proposed to last week. She said yes, which was cool. Um, I proposed to her at the Kennedy Center in DC. And uh, yeah, let's just say everything in the romance department is going really, really well. I honestly couldn't be happier. <laughs> but enough about me, let's talk about you guys. There are quite a few factors, which for some reason I haven't seen any other folks talk about. So I did want to spend a little bit of time diving into them. These include your personal and career aspirations, your socioeconomic status, any plans you might have post-grad and more. The better you know yourself, the clearer an answer you'll have to the question of whether attending an Ivy League college is right or worth it for you. Now, one of the most important factors to consider when it comes to choosing whether any college is right for you is what do you want to do after school? Are you trying to go to grad school and further your studies, become a lawyer, doctor, professor? Or are you looking to become someone more like an artist entrepreneur and upon graduating, start your own business, enterprise or whatever? If you're planning on going the more pre-professional route and you're a middle-class American, my advice is to actually attend a state school and save a bunch of money. You could even transfer out after a year or two and go to an Ivy League or top 20 college after. I personally know lots of people who've done this successfully. In fact, our agency, The Elevated School, helps students do this every single year. <laughs> it's an incredibly brilliant strategy and a great way to save tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Plus, I have friends at Yale who told me that their GPA suffered because there was so much competition there. When it came time to apply to medical school or law school, they confessed that they kind of wish they had gone to a college where it would have been easier to get perfect grades. So take that as you will. Now, if you're interested in walking the more atypical path, artist, writer, entrepreneur, I'd argue that Ivy League schools actually offer more value. Here's why. While Ivy League networks on the whole aren't that great, the micro network of, say, for instance, Yale entrepreneurs is actually really, really tight knit and close because there's really not that many of us. Therefore, it is much easier to find collaborators, creatives, co-founders who actually take their work seriously and are looking to make this into a legit career post-grad. I met my better half, my current co-founder, Jeff, at Yale at a breakdance practice of all places. And if it wasn't for that chance encounter, it would have been definitely very difficult to find him otherwise. He is one of those people that has just utterly changed the trajectory of my personal and professional life. And I wouldn't be me. And this channel wouldn't be this channel if it weren't for Jeff. So I'm very, very grateful to Yale for bringing us together. That's all for today, my friends. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you're interested in reaching out, leave a comment below. I read every single one. Or you can simply visit our website, www.elevated.school. Cheers, catch you at the next one.